Hello everybody, it's Mike, and I wanna make a video. It's 2022, I've owned my Tesla since 2017 about the top 11 reasons, and why am I doing 11? We're gonna get run over by a car, watch out. Why am I doing 11? It's because Tesla uses 11 like they do in Spinal Tap. That's the top number, it's not 10, right, Denise? 11, Denise is so excited, look how excited she is. That we're doing this in 2022, I've owned the car for this long, but Tesla is still an industry disruptor. I'm gonna give the top 11, 10, 11 reasons. The first reason is that there are no dealer networks. Everything that Tesla has is corporately owned, right, Denise? You've seen them in shopping malls. I know you saw a Lucid one recently, but that's not normal. When's the last time you saw a GM dealership <laughs> in the mall? It doesn't happen. It still doesn't happen. Never, but the, the nice thing about not having a dealership is you know that you're not going to be talked at by a salesperson. Yeah, I got to go talk to the manager. When okay, I'm not sure if we can do that. I got to go talk to the manager while you sit there for an hour. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to buy a car, it's pretty straightforward. You order it online, you arrange your financing. And or you could go into a place done. if you want, but there's no negotiating, there's no haggling over the prices, right? There's none of that. No one's going to take your your vehicle registration hostage and you wait there all day. <laughs> How long does it take to buy a car? Now, I, mean, now I have to buy. Now I have to because they have my registration. I can't leave, right? Yeah. <laughs> Reason number two. I got two fingers. All Teslas, almost almost all Teslas that have ever been built are now capable of full self-driving or will be as soon as the software is downloaded. So no other auto manufacturers even said that they are gonna have an entire fleet of cars. Some have talked about some self-driving features, but none of them have really talked about level five or even their plans. I mean, but almost all Teslas on the road right now which does not include any Teslas built before October 2016, but there's only four years in there, 2012, 2016, and they didn't build that many. So most everybody's capable of full self-driving. Does anybody else have that? No. No, and what's really <laughs> nice about full self-driving, well, I haven't experienced it yet. I've seen videos, but you don't have to steer or brake. You don't have to pay such close attention to what's happening around you. And if all the cars have that, then they're not going to collide into each other as often. That's true. They'll know they're, they're around. Yeah. That's a feature that's going to be actually on the screen. Supposedly soon it'll be released that instead of just being a gray or black color, the Tesla colors will be the color of car they actually are because they'll already know all this. Unless someone's wrapped their car, I guess. Oh, oh well. Reason number... Look at my fingers. Three. Tesla owns all service locations. All, corporate owns all service locations. So there's more consistency again, like Denise was saying. You don't have the games they're playing. They want to fix your car and get you out. They care about the fleet. They're not, they don't have their own independent reasons for being in business. And a lot of people know that from these independent dealers, what's their big profit center? Do you know? Parts. This, actually parts and service, yeah, that's what it is. So they want to try to extract as much money as possible from you as, po as they can. They want you to bring your car back in as much as you possibly can. Actually, Tesla's even removed service requirements that they had in the past, where they said you had to change some fluids like once a year, have things inspected, mm -hmm. and you don't even have to do that anymore. So there's mm -hmm. not really that motivation because they can't even keep up with the service loads a lot of times. That's been uh, an unfortunate uh, side effect of that, but it also don't want to charge you for things you don't need. So how many times have you gotten <laughs> put through the ringer by a car repair facility. Uh, women especially, but men get taken advantage of too. They try to sell you things you don't even need. Men, men don't do that. <laughs> but it, they do, <laughs> they don't know any better. But it, it, the opposite happens at the Tesla repair center. Mike has told them that his car had problems and Tesla denied it. They didn't even want to change out some of the things that he wanted repaired early. Yeah, well that's still an issue, I guess, is proper diagnosis, but I tend to notice the noises early. That's, that's why. I just want to wait till things break yeah but yeah reason number four when full self-driving actually does become available it's kind of partnering along with these other things we brought up the teslas will start to figure out what's wrong with themselves which they already kind of know already and they'll drive themselves into the service centers at night which are all corporately owned like we talked about and get themselves fixed and then drive themselves back which will totally ch shift the paradigm of the entire service experience right yeah which sounds 
really great. It, um, but I know when, when I had a car that needed repair, sometimes I had to wait until I had the money to fix it. Like when I was in oh, my early oh. 20s. What if you don't have the money? That's right. So, yeah. I think so. <laughs> well, you owe us money. You're, we're not driving the car back until you pay the bill. Well, yeah. Some people are going to want to turn that off if they don't want their car leaving in the middle of the night and running up oh. a big bill. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're right. But most people, I think that if they can afford a Tesla, they can afford to maintain it. <laughs> yeah. It won't be an issue. Reason number five, my whole hand. Tesla does not have any paid advertising and they never have. They claim to not want to spend the money on trying to convince you psychologically the reasons why you need to buy their cars. They want to spend the money on engineering and making their products better. And so far it's worked, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The cars sell themselves. Yeah, and who else does that? Even like these other car companies like Lucid and stuff like that, they spend money on advertising, the pure EVs. So again, another reason why they are still an industry disruptor, even to this day, even with their stock value as high as it is. And by the way, I am a Tesla stock owner and anybody who owns the S&P 500 stock, by the way, now is a Tesla stock owner, which is basically everyone. So just want to make sure you know that. Anything else about, add about no, are these, you're going to start at some point? Yeah. Seeing some television advertisements on NBC? Are they even around anymore? I don't even know. Yes. <laughs> we still have three networks in this country. We do? There's nothing new. Okay. It hasn't changed since the 80s. What about newspapers? They still exist? And yeah. magazines? Washington, I don't even read that. Washington there. Post is still around. Uh -huh. But Tesla doesn't have a press department or marketing Oh, wait, we haven't gotten to that. That's, we're getting to that. Okay. Reason number six. I've run out of room on my, on my hands. Tesla is not a car company or even a software company, That I, the way I look at it. Although they do write a lot of software. But they are an AI artificial intelligence and robotics company because basically almost all the Teslas, like at least the ones that are capable of full self-driving we talked about are robots on four wheels. What do you think about all that? Yeah, that's true. I, cause I've, we've had a Tesla for so long. I know what it's capable of. When I see another Tesla, I, I see a robot. I see something that also sees me. It's a semi sentient being. Uh, oh, really? Oh, <laughs> So no other no other car companies doing this. No other, no other car, see, yeah. again, still an industry disruptor. Yeah, still. Yeah, the other car companies don't even come close. And that's what Elon Musk says is the reason why they haven't developed level five self-driving because apparently they realize at some point that they're actually truly developing an artificially intelligent robot and they have to solve all those problems before level five is gonna work. Okay, reason number seven. Tesla has some of the largest manufacturing facilities in the world, these gigafactories, that's what they call them. And they keep opening more. They opened, the recent ones that were open uh, outside the United States were in China and Berlin, and they just opened the one in Austin, Texas. So they have the biggest bandwidth, the most manufacturing capability for building these robots and building these self-driving cars. And nobody else has, no one even comes close in the amount of volume dedicated specifically for those products. Yeah, it's different from everybody else. I know GM still has small factories around the United States and Mexico and Canada, I think, but Tesla has huge factories. In fact, we got chased out of the one in Austin. Yeah, when it was still on the ground, you can see a video on our channel about yeah, that. Yeah, I've never seen a facility so huge. All right, another aspect of the automotive industry is collision repair. Tesla, believe it or not, has some of their own corporately owned collision centers, and our car is actually being fixed in one of the collision centers right now. But uh, even though they only have like, I think, it depends on who you talk to, they have four to 15 throughout the world. The one we're going to is in Rockville, Maryland. And, but you know that over time, they're gonna have all their own collision centers. They're gonna bring all that in-house, like they brought everything else in-house. So they're gonna own everything. It's not gonna be owned by any independent people. They're gonna have a lot of less problems. Everything's gonna communicate well, get your car fixed, probably drive itself in at night. And of course, they're gonna own all the supply chains, including probably the battery manufacturing eventually, even though they partner with Panasonic, they'll probably develop their own battery cells, which I think they're in process of doing that too. So they're basically gonna own every part of the supply chain, every part of the process, every part of the systems that go involved in, in their business, right? Yeah, so you don't have to worry about going to from store to store to O'Malley to Advance to AutoZone. To, to Joe's see, Auto Repair. To see who has, or <laughs> pick a part from a junkyard to see who has your part. Tesla will have all the parts. And I don't think they're in it to mark it up and make tons of money either. Yeah, that's why they're doing it. No. They're going to make you pay every last cent. It's not. Elon is all about innovation. There's actually, there's much corruption. I say all these different levels of stuff, right? That's where um, all the corruption enters into the automotive and the bad reputations 
you know, uh, you know, the used car people have one of the sales people have some, some of the lowest, worst reputations in the world, just like realtors, even though I happen to be a realtor too. <laughs> so. uh -huh. But I don't think Elon's in it to make money. He's already <laughs> the, the richest person in the world. I don't see the prices increasing just for profit. Um, they got to pay Elon some more money. Give him his golden parachute. Well, he, he talks about how much carbon we're not putting into the atmosphere. So I, I think it's for a good cause. Okay, and reason number nine is that they are a full company of 100% pure electric platforms. That makes a difference. We've, we've been driving a Polestar recently. It does make a difference. If you don't have a platform that's dedicated from the ground up for, for electric. So basically, Tesla has like the most efficient designs, most efficient shapes for overall efficiency, not only space, but also electrical usage. They have the best crash protection. They have the fastest acceleration. And they can, of course, also do this at the least cost because they're only dedicating on electric and everything fits and works the way it's supposed to because it's designed from the ground up to be electric. They're not pulling out of the ice parts bins, basically, like a lot of these other manufacturers are for their cars. Yeah, other manufacturers will try to save money by building a car on, on an existing platform from an ice. Uh, internal combustion engine vehicle. Tesla does not do that. Reason number 10, and we're not done with one more. Denise mentioned this earlier. Tesla does not have a press department. At least they don't anymore. They used to have one, like all the other manufacturers, but Elon got fed up with it and got rid of it. So now they have nobody mentioning anything, except you might happen to see something on their website. That's when you find out what Tesla did, right? Yeah. And is that good or bad? Uh, that's, well, I don't know. <laughs> I'd like to hear about what's going on more often, but they, they don't talk a lot. Well, well people, YouTubers like me talk about it all the time. Yeah. yeah. And, and other people, other like the fan people, you know, the fanboys or whatever. Some of them don't say anything bad. Uh, and actually, that's on reason number 11 plus, which we'll get to as to why they will never say anything bad. It's not just that they're Tesla stock owners because everybody owns Tesla stock now. It's another reason. Okay, number 11, Tesla does not give out cars to automotive reviewers. It's the same reason they don't have a uh, press department, but they don't give out cars. That's how this, the industry works, in case you don't know, is that the auto manufacturers, all of them except for Tesla, supply vehicles to car reviewers so they can say great things about them, so they can keep giving them more vehicles mm -hmm. to review. Because you never want to say anything horrible because then they're never going to give you another car to review ever again. Have you ever noticed how they're so positive, all these car reviewers? <laughs> that's uh, why. I remember some from Consumer Reports well, right. that were negative. Well, that's, a diff <laughs> that's, that's the one caveat, Consumer Reports. They're independently owned. They own the only cars they review are the ones that they will buy on their own, source on their own, purchase on their own, not given to them with their own money. Okay, but think about that. That's how Consumer Reports operates, right? About, Nobody else operates like that. Top Gear. They, they no. Shared, mm -mm. They said no. bad things about the BMW X3. No, but know what, they really, know what they really said bad things about? Teslas. Almost, yeah. They got sued by Tesla, almost everybody, because Top Gear gets all kinds of cars from almost every other manufacturer except Tesla. So all they're going to do, if you think about it, it's amazing that anyone's ever said anything good about Tesla. It probably must be that the products are so damn good that they're irrefutably good that they have to say something good. Otherwise, they'll look like idiots. Because really, I don't really have much, too much respect for people in the automotive review business because they are, they don't want to bite the hand that feeds them. They do not want to say bad things about any auto manufacturer is going to continue to supply them with free cars to review. Think about that. It's a conflict of interest. It's a major one, but everybody seems to be okay with it. I'm not. I just look at the reviews and whenever I watch them, I figure, oh, this is why they're saying this. This is why they're saying that. And like I said, it's amazing anybody says anything good about Tesla. And the fact that they do means that they must have far superior products, not just a little bit, but far superior. Okay, so the bonus for watching all the way to the end after 11 plus is the old referral plan. They don't have it anymore. Tesla got rid of it. Most, I don't think anybody has a referral plan, but it, what used to be so generous, you could earn all these free supercharging credits. You could earn a free Roadster. You could earn multiple free Roadsters, which cost 200, which cost a quarter million dollars each. Okay, now that's the pro, that's part of the problem, though, but this is gone now. But there's a lot of Tesla YouTubers who made multiple wins of free Roadsters, which have yet to be delivered. No one's okay? ever gotten their free Right, right. But, but know what this means is that these original Tesla YouTubers, these original fanboys, are never going to say anything bad about Tesla. You know why? Because Elon might decide he's not going to deliver their roadsters. <laughs> so, but this is not part of the equation anymore. It's, another, it's a conflict of interest like the automotive reviewers have with the traditional manufacturers, but it's gone now. That's out of the equation moving forward. It has been for like the last 
two or three years of. We didn't win a roadster, so no, we have we didn't. nothing to gain by telling you this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's it. So thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.